Welcome to Algebra, solving one and two step equations. Solving equations is a fundamental skill in algebra, one you need to practice a lot. This lesson begins with one and two step equations showing the correct process for finding solutions. Take a moment to read through this information, and then we'll work through these examples together. Let's take a look at this equation, number 12. What is the solution to this equation? Well, the process for two-step equations is to always undo the addition or the subtraction first. So here we subtract 10 from both sides. We cancel the two 10s, which leaves us with 2x is equal to 18. Then we divide both sides by 2, cancel the 2s, and our final answer is x equals 9 and we always circle the final answer. In this equation, we have 12x minus 15 equals 6 minus 3x. Again, we have variables on both sides, so in this particular case, the first step is to gather the variables all onto one side. So we'll add 3x to both sides, cancel the 3x, which leaves us 15x minus 15 equals 6. Now we undo the minus 15 by adding 15 to both sides, cancel the 15s, which leaves us 15x equals 21. Finally, we divide both sides by 15, cancel the 15, and then 21 divided by 15 is an improper fraction which can be reduced to 7 over 5. And it's okay to leave it improper this way. Solving one and two step equations. Solving an equation is used to find the value of the variable. It is very important to use the correct process of undoing the operation in an equation using the inverse operation. The goal is to isolate the variable. To undo addition equations, the inverse operation is subtraction. We subtract the value from both sides. Solve the following equations, undoing addition by subtracting from both sides. In this first example, plus 5 is undone using the inverse operation of minus 5 from both sides. We cancel the minus 5 and plus 5, which leaves x equals 3. In the second one, we undo the 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. We cancel the 5s. We get x equals negative 2. In this third one, we undo the plus 7 by subtracting 7 from both sides. Cancel and 4 is equal to x. Here we do subtract 8 from both sides, which leaves us negative 11 equal to x. When the variable is isolated by itself on one side of the equation, it doesn't matter which side, with its value on the other side, the equation has been solved. Always circle the final solution of an equation. Try these two equations yourself. The minus 15 needs to be undone using the inverse operation of addition. So we add 15 to both sides, cancel the two 15s, and we get x equals 45 as the solution. In the second equation, we add 3 to both sides, cancel the 3s, x is equal to negative 7. Try these two. Here we have 2x equals negative 12, the first time we've seen multiplication. To undo multiplication, we divide both sides by the value. So we divide by 2, divide by 2, we cancel the 2s, and then work out the negative 12 divided by 2, which is x equals negative 6, and we circle the solution. Now, the normal way to show division is not using the division sign, but using the division bar. So here we divide both sides by negative 5, cancel the negative 5s, leaving negative 4 equals x. Try these two. In solving division equations, we multiply both sides by the value. And the typical way to show this is using a number in parentheses, which means multiplication. So the inverse operation of dividing by 3 is multiplying both sides by 3. We cancel the 3s on the right side. On the left, we have 3 times 15, which is 45, which is the final value of x. In the second equation, Negative 4 is undone by multiplying by it. Multiplying both sides by negative 4, we get a is equal to negative 24. In these two equations, we have a fraction, 
as the coefficient. Well, there are two basic ways to do the fraction. We undo each part of the fraction separately, starting with the division, undoing by multiplying both sides by 3, which leaves us 2x equals 24, then divide both sides by 2, which gives us x equals 12. The other way that's a little quicker is to actually multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient fraction. So here we multiply both sides by 3 over 2, cancel the fraction, and we get 8 times 3 over 2, which multiplies out to be x equals 12. Both approaches have the same result. The second way just does both steps in one action. Give these a try, using the two-step method on the first one, and then the one-step method on the other three. In the first one, we multiply both sides by 4, which gives us 3x equals 24. Then we divide both sides by 3, which gives x equals 8. In the next equation, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 3 over 5, which is negative 5 over 3. It cancels on the left side, and then we multiply it out on the right to get x equals negative 15. In the third equation, we multiply both sides by 8 over 5, the reciprocal of 5 over 8, cancel on the left side, and on the right side we have 10 times 8 over 5. Now, the 10 over 5 can be reduced to 2 over 1, which makes working out the final solution a little bit easier. So we have 2 times 8, which is 16. In the final equation, we multiply both sides by 3 over 2. We cancel on the right, work it out on the left, and again, you have 3 times 8 over 2. The 8 and 2 can reduce to 4 and 1, and then we have 3 times 4, which is 12, the final answer. Two-step equations involve two steps. Use two inverse operations in the following order. Isolate the variable first by undoing addition or subtraction, then by undoing multiplication or division. So we have 2x plus 5 is equal to 15. We subtract 5 from both sides, leaving 2x equals 10. Then we divide both sides by 2, which gives us x equals 5. In the second equation, we undo the plus 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides, leaving 14 equals 2x. Then we divide both sides by 2x, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. In the third equation, we undo the plus 10 by subtracting 10 from both sides, leaving 5x equals 20. Then we divide both sides by 5, x is equal to 4. And in the final equation, we first subtract 5 from both sides, leaving negative 2x equals 20, and then divide both sides by negative 2, which is negative 10. You try these four, then we'll work through them together. In the first equation, we subtract 5 from both sides, undoing the addition, which leaves x over 2 equals 3. And then we multiply both sides by 2, giving x equals 3 times 2, which is 6. In the second equation, we add 4 to both sides, leaving x over 3 equals 10. Then we multiply both sides by 3, giving us x equals 30. In the third equation, 2 thirds x minus 2 equals 6. We add 2 to both sides, giving us 2 thirds x equals 8. And then we multiply by the reciprocal, giving us 8 times 3 over 2, which is 12 as the final value of x. And in the fourth equation, we subtract 5 from both sides, giving us 3 is equal to x over 4. Then we multiply both sides by 4, giving us 12 as the final answer. Sometimes you will see two-step equations that look like this. These two examples contain division terms and look very similar, but are not. Look carefully and see the difference. In this first example, the division term has a two-part term on top and a single value on the bottom. When this occurs, division must be undone first, multiplying both sides by 3, then undo addition by subtracting 5 from both sides. In this second example, the division term only has one term each on the top and bottom, and so the plus 5 is undone first per the normal process, followed by undoing the division. You try these four. On this first one, we must multiply both sides by 5, since there is a two-part term on the top of the division bar. That gives us y minus 4 equals 35. Then we undo the minus 4 by adding 4 to both sides, giving us y equals 39. 
In the second equation, we multiply both sides by 4, giving us a plus 6 equals 44. Then subtract 6 from both sides, a is equal to 38. In the third example, multiply both sides by 2, first of all. 2 times 20 is 40, which leaves us 40 equals x minus 3. Then we add 3 to both sides, x is equal to 43. And in the last one, this is not a division term where there are multiple parts on the top, so we can do the normal order, which is add 4 to both sides first, and then we have x over 4 equals 11. Then we multiply both sides by 4 to get 44 as the final answer. Try these four. Here we add 4 to both sides, giving us 2a equals 16, then divide both sides by 2, which is a equals 8. In the second one, we subtract 4 from both sides, giving us 12 is equal to 3x. Then we divide both sides by 3, 4 is equal to x. In this third example, we subtract 4 from both sides, giving us negative 24 equals 2x. Then we divide both sides by 2, giving us negative 12 as the final value of x. And in this last example, we add 5 to both sides, giving us 3x equals 18. Divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 6. You try these four. Here we have division and addition, so we undo the addition first by subtracting 7 from both sides, leaving y over 3 equals 6. Then we multiply both sides by 3, giving us y equals 18. Here we subtract 7 from both sides, leaving 5 is equal to r over 4. Then multiply both sides by 4, giving us 20 as the final answer of r. In the third example, we subtract 5 from both sides, leaving 20 is equal to negative 10x. Divide both sides by negative 10, negative 2 is the final answer. And in the last equation, we multiply both sides by 3 first because of the two-part term above the division bar. That gives us x plus 6 is equal to 30. Then we subtract 6 from both sides. x is now equal to 24. A key skill to know that an answer is correct is to check your answer. Use the space below to check the answers to the four questions above. In this first equation, y is replaced by 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 6 plus 7 is 13. And that is indeed correct. In the second equation, r is replaced by 20. And so we have 12 equals 7 plus 20 over 4, which is 5. 7 plus 5 is indeed 12. That checks out. In the third equation, x is replaced by negative 2. Negative 10 times negative 2 is a positive 20. 20 plus 5 is indeed equal to 25. And in the last one, x is replaced by 24. 24 plus 6 is 30. 30 divided by 3 is indeed 10. So they check out. Try these four. In the first one, we add 5 to both sides, leaving us 2x equals 21. Then we divide by 2, and the answer is 21 over 2. Now, if an answer does not simplify to a whole number, it is acceptable to leave the answer as a reduced fraction. In the second example, we multiply by 5 first because of the two-part term above the division bar. That gives us 55 equals x plus 9. Then we subtract 9 from both sides. x is equal to 46. In the third example, we subtract 5 from both sides, giving negative 16 equals 3x. Then we divide by 3, and here is another example of an improper fraction, which you can just leave just as it is. Negative 16 over 3. In the fourth example, we subtract 9 from both sides, giving negative 3x equals negative 24. Then we divide both sides by negative 3, giving x is equal to positive 8. Try these. Here we subtract 20 from both sides, giving negative 60 is equal to 10x. We divide both sides by 10, and we get negative 6 as the final value of x. Here we add 11 to both sides. We have negative 2x is equal to negative 30. Divide both sides by negative 2. x is equal to positive 15. Here we subtract 25 from both sides, leaving 25 equals 10x. We divide by 10, and we get 25 over 10, which reduces to 5 over 2. And then finally here, we multiply both sides by 4, again because of the two-part term above the division bar. That leaves us x minus 3 equals 44. Add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals 47.